Okay. All right, this is an interview with John McMullen, Days in Hicksville, New York, 26th of June, 2003, uh, approximately 2.25 p.m. Inv interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? John Kenneth McMullen, born April 26, 1922, in Washington, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, what was your educational background prior to entering the service? High school. Okay. Just out of high school, as a matter of fact. All right. Now, um, did you enlist or were you drafted? No, I enlisted. Why did you pick the Army Air Corps? Because I always wanted to fly, and I hope that sometime I, I might be able to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Had you ever flown prior to entering service? Only once, when my dad took me up in a Lockheed Vega, and it cost us five dollars apiece. So it. Uh, and it lasted for about 20 minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, I noticed you enlisted before Pearl Harbor. That's right. Okay. Um, where were you inducted and where was your uh, boot camp? I training? was uh, sworn in at Fort Hayes, Columbus, Ohio. And from there, we uh, went to Jefferson Barracks, Missouri, where we did uh, various uh, beginnings of military service. Uh, I had my share of KP and various other uh, undesirable jobs. Plus, uh, learn, learn to march and do things like that. Okay. Um, where were you and what was your re recollection of your feelings when you heard about Pearl Harbor? A friend of mine who enlisted with me, we were at Chinook Field at the time, but we had a weekend pass and we were in Chicago and we'd just come out of a movie and uh, uh, all the MPs were there and they had uh, bullhorns and so forth. I guess they didn't have bullhorns then, but uh, anyhow, PA systems told us to go back to our base, pack up your civvies and send them home. And that was uh, on Sunday, which was December I guess, mm -hmm. December the 7th, yes. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what your feelings were when you heard about what had happened? It was sort of a shock, but I guess we were so young and we would never had anything like this happen to us before. And uh, I don't really recall whether we were shocked. But I'm sure we were shocked, yes, mm -hmm. both of us. But uh, then we went, went on from there. We, we had schooling to do. I was going through airplane mechanic school at the new field. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to finish that, which was we were almost ready to finish. Actually, it was, I think it was the, uh, just after Christmas of that, that we, we got our diploma, as it were, as an airplane mechanic. And we were given our orders, and a matter of fact, I was sent to Mitchell Field, New York. Mm -hmm. All right, um, how long did you uh, serve as a mechanic? <laughs> just a few months. Because uh, actually, I applied while I was at Chinoot for flying, mm -hmm. and I guess the military got rather desperate. Desperate, and they hired me to go to pilot school, and that that was that was the beginning of the. Actually, I went into pre-flight in the middle of February of 1942. Uh, we went to Maxwell Field for pre-flight. And which was just more than ground school, learning code and so forth like that. And we went to primary flying, which was a, at a private flying school where we flew uh, Stearman's PT-17s. That was at Helena, Arkansas, and Helena, uh, Helena Aero Tech, excuse me, at uh, Helena, Arkansas, where we put in 60 hours. Matter of fact, that's where I soloed. That was uh, one of the best moments of my life. So it, uh, and from there we went to basic training. Well, while at uh, Helena we had civilian instructors. Mm -hmm. Then we went, went to Blytheville, Arkansas. That's in Blytheville. Uh, that, that was the basic training where we flew the heavier uh, uh, BT-13s, and then finished there and went to George Field, Illinois, which was in uh, Lawrenceville, Illinois. And that was, uh, that's where we, we received our wings. So. 
that was on December 13th, 1942. I was 20 years old. Okay. Um, what? Uh, when were you? You ended up flying uh, B-24s. When was the first time you flew in a B-24? Well, that's that's. We didn't fly those at, at the beginning. As a matter of fact, from uh, from George Field, we were sent to Grenier, New Hampshire which they were very short on airplanes. We didn't do much flying there. It was anti-sub patrol. Mm -hmm. They had a single engine 047 with two depth charges under the wing and it flew like a streamlined brick but uh, we were, we'd go out over the uh, ocean and look for submarines. Well, from there I went there very long and then I went to um, let's see, I went to um, Westover Field where we flew, I flew co-pilot on B-25s. Uh, we were there for about three months. We got moved around quite a bit. From there I went to Langley Field, Virginia. We flew B-18s. Not that many people knew what a B-18 was, but it was nothing more than a DC-3 with a big fat fuse was. And we had radar on that, so we flew off the coast of Virginia looking for submarines. From there I was transferred to Gander, Newfoundland, where we went into B-17s. We flew anti-sub of the upper northern Atlantic for submarines. Then from there, with the whole group or the whole squadron, moved to Mitchell Field again. Here I am coming back as an officer and a pilot. There I checked out as a airplane commander, and then. Uh, they decided, well, it's about time we were getting ready for war. So we all transferred to Casper, Wyoming, where the group was formed. Colonel Napier was our commanding officer. And also Colonel Vance was our deputy CEO. He, incidentally, was, he got the Medal of Honor over in England. And then uh, from there, I went, we went, all went to Wendover, Utah, which is on the west end of the Great Salt Flats and it was away from nowhere and that's where we started flying B-24s. Our crew was crew one. We were the first crew to be to be, I was instructor pilot and also uh, our crew was crew one, the first crew to be formed. Uh, we stayed there until uh, middle of April and then, we, as a group, we flew all the way down to Morrison Field, Florida. And from Morrison Field, Florida, we started taking the southern route to England. Matter of fact, as a note, we, we left Morrison Field, Florida on my 22nd birthday with a crew. We flew down to Trinidad, over to Belém, Brazil. Fortaleza, Brazil, across to Dakar, Africa, up to Marrakesh, along the Portuguese coast, and into St. Morgan, England. From there we spent the night, and then we went over to Halesworth, England, where we went into a month of training, formation flying and so forth, to get ready for combat. And then on Memorial Day, 1944, we flew our first mission over the continental Europe, and that was Oscherschleben. That was in Holland, I believe it was. I have the list. I think you have. You, yes. you probably have the list there. Now, how did the uh, uh, B-24 compare to the B-17? The, the B-24 was a faster airplane. It had the Davis wing, which was a high-speed wing. We could carry four 2,000 pound bombs, whereas the B-17 could only carry two. We could fly higher. We flew around 24,000 feet. The B-17s were around 21. They were a few thousand feet below us. Mm -hmm. They were much slower, but they had a, they had a heavier wing, which but the B-24 was, it was a hard airplane to fly. The cockpit was very, had very limited visibility out of the, the windshield. And uh, it was a difficult airplane to fly. No power steering on, the, on, that, on that airplane. But it was 
very reliable. A lot of people didn't like it because they thought it, it did not take the, it would not take the damage to the B-17, flak damage or fighter damage, anything like that. But well, I flung both of them, mm -hmm. and I, I like both of them. Well, let's uh, jump a little bit. You said you flew B-7, Leaf 25s. Yes. And I know from this you flew B-29s later. How would you compare? No, I didn't fly B-29s. Oh, you didn't fly them? No, I didn't fly B-29s. No, there would be always B-24s. Oh, okay. I thought you... No. Oh, you, you didn't get a chance to go to them. No, the, the group came back. When we when I finished my tour over there, I stayed over and worked as a, like a crew scheduler. I used mm -hmm. to set up crews. And I stayed over and worked in operations. And uh, the group came back, and they were going into B-29. Okay, yeah, I see, I see that. They, no. they ended up in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, but fortunately, the war ended, and they didn't get a chance to... Uh, go over and try their skill mm -hmm. in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, why don't we go back then to your, you told us about your first flight, uh, your first mission. Uh, were there any missions that stood out more than others or? Well, you see, when, when we flew Memorial Day of 44 and then my fifth mission, I think it was, was over Normandy, and it was on D-Day. They got us up in the wee hours of the morning, and we knew something was happening because when they got us up that early, why? So we, we uh, most of my missions, if you'll look on the list, will probably show that uh, most of them were over France. But mm -hmm. see, we were, we were helping the ground forces. We were bombing ahead of the, the ground forces. And uh, we, we got shot up. Uh, the first mission, I lost number three engine, but we got back okay. And uh, the uh, piece of flak got into an oil cooler. We had to feather it. And then uh, another time over Paris, I lost two engines. I got two engines shot up, so we came back on hit the other two. The other ones, a lot of flak, and uh, it. Uh, I, I guess we were so young that it it, it, it bothered us a little bit, but uh, I lost we we lost one quarter of our squadron actually in a time that we were over there, and uh, it's when I think of some of those things that uh, I realize it now how more, more that we were so young twenty two twenty five twenty four years old it. Uh, we, we grew up real fast. Um, could you tell, when you uh, flew in su air support for uh, the, the D-Day, did you see the ships below you? What was your reaction to the ships we had below and how many planes <laughs> you had in the air? We, we had airplanes all over the place. As a matter of fact, it's a wonder if we didn't end up with more mid-airs. I, I don't recall of any, any mm -hmm. mid-airs. We had to go in low. We we're used to flying at 24 or 25,000 feet. Mm -hmm. But do, due to the uh, cloud cover, we had to go in around 10,000 feet. And there was B-26s, B-25s, C-47s. Uh, there was uh, C-47 pulling gliders. Uh, that, uh, as a matter of fact, I have a picture taken from one of our airplanes. Uh, it shows a little bit of, the, of Normandy beachhead and shows the the, uh, the landing barges. It's not very many, but it, 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 it still has a picture there. That uh, uh, they there are airplanes all over the place. You had to watch out for uh, barrage balloons too, especially because the ships were using them, you know, to prevent mm -hmm. uh, German fighters from coming in and and bombing them and so forth. Yeah. Did you fly, fly the same plane all the time? Uh, I, 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 I had an airplane, but uh, when, we, when we got shot up with the two engines out of our Paris, it had to go to the airplane hospital to get repaired. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, No, we didn't fly the same airplane all the time. I flew quite a few in my own airplane. Did you ever get to name a plane? I could have, but I never did. I had a shamrock painted on the side, and that was, that was my lucky... 
at Did all. Did you ever paint your jackets or decorate your jacket? I have a jacket that says Sweated 32. Uh, and that's, that's what I did, it's Sweated 32 missions. So, uh, yeah. Did you ever wear a flak jacket at all? Oh, every time, every time. When we crawled into that cockpit, we weighed about uh, 300 pounds. It seemed like parachute, back parachute, uh, flak vest, plus electrically heated flying suits, plus we had what they called escape uh, uniform or uniform. Escape suit. It was uh, gabardine trousers and a jacket. And also, we carried a pair of black shoes and we tied them under a harness if we had to bail out so that we could use it for escape. Black shoes because we had brown, well, the military had brown shoes, and if we had brown shoes on, right, and you were picked up by the Germans or somebody undesirable, why well, then <coughs> they, uh, we, we had to uh, wear those black shoes. Mm -hmm. And we, had, we also had escape photos in our pocket. Little, little square escape photos. I still have mine. I should have brought them along. <laughs> now, what was the purpose of the, the escape photos? Because they would, they, they would give us identity papers. The underground. Oh, I see. The French underground. Yeah. And they did a good job on that. They, they brought a lot of our guys out. Okay, um, after your 32 missions, then uh, what? Well, I stayed over and worked in operations, mm -hmm. scheduling crews. And uh, then we came back uh, by, we came back by ship, or a friend of mine and I came back by, we came back the, the hard way on ship. And uh, then, then I was, uh, they gave us a, 30 days leave down in Miami Beach, R&R. &R. Then from there, uh, I was stationed in Victorville, uh, California, flying B-24s, radar navigators. And we were there for quite a while. And then uh, I was stationed at Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And from there, I was transferred to uh, Love Field, Dallas, Texas where we were in the ferry command and we would go out and pick up war weary B-24s and bring them to the, the graveyard as it were and, and that flew uh, AT-6s were right, uh, right out of the factory in Grand Prairie in Texas and then uh, after that, oh, the, that in November I, I got married <laughs> and so at the, then we were stationed at the well, it's called Travis Air Base now. It was Fairfield Sioux Soon at the time, uh, just between Sacramento and San Francisco. And I flew C-54s. Well, I went to C-54 training before that to Homestead, Florida. Then I was transferred out to uh, Travis Air Base. And we flew, uh, I made, we made a couple trips to Hawaii carrying freight and personnel. And then we did make it all the way to Japan. Then I stayed there and worked as a base uh, flying safety officer. And then the war ended, of course, about that time. And well, I was in actually I, I got out in four, over in '46, so I stayed. I was hoping to get a regular commission. Uh, they, they didn't like me, I guess. So, they, <laughs> so I I got out at one point. Then I went to went to. to uh, uh, University of Pittsburgh for two years, and the fa family began to grow, so I had to go out and be serious. So then I came to work with American Airlines. Okay. So did you use the GI Bill to... Uh, to go to school? To go yes. To school. Yes, mm -hmm. I did, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you ever use that 5220 club? No, never did. <laughs> um, did you uh, join any veterans organizations? I... In, when we... Before we came with American, I, I, my dad talked me into joining American Legion in, in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, at uh, uh, Perry Como's home town. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I wasn't that interested in organizations, but I, I did join our own group organization. I'm still a member of that, mm -hmm. and we went to. Did you ever stay in contact with anyone that you uh, flew with? service? Yes, as a matter of fact, my co-pilot also worked for American Airlines, oh. and I didn't know it. 
and uh, he lives on Long Island. He, he, he lives down in, uh, on the South Shore, and we talk to him once in a while. My bombardier uh, lives out in uh, California. As a matter of fact, I just got a letter. Well, I, uh, he wrote a nice letter to me. I finally, I lost him. I couldn't find him. And uh, then I finally located him out in California. The uh, ball gunner is down in Florida. My waist gunner is out in Indiana. And that's just about the end of our, that's, that's as far as we go. So how do you think uh, your service changed or affected your life? That was my profession. That was my profession for 30 years with American Airlines. And the best thing that ever happened to me. Ever since when I was a kid, 11 years old, making model airplanes, I wanted to fly. And you, you I, my own grandchildren, they're, they're doing all right, but they seem to be kind of, kind of can, they don't know exactly what they want to do. So hopefully they'll, they'll find themselves one day. But uh, when I was growing up, my parents didn't have money. It was right after the Depression. Mm -hmm. Nobody had money. Some people did go to work for work on an airport to, to wash down airplanes to make a few dollars to get a few hours of flying in. But things are different now. It's entirely different. Even the flying in commercial aviation is not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, nothing is, really. Here you uh, sent us these two photographs. Could you hold them up to the camera and tell when they were taken and what they show? Okay. This this one here is uh, I was at Wendover, Utah. That's where we did our training in the V twenty four. That's where we learned to fly formation and so forth. And this one is receiving the Distinguished Flying Cross after the, that was sometime after the thirty second mission by Colonel Napier. Unfortunately, I was able to contact him a few times before he died, but uh, he, he came out of general. So that uh, mm -hmm. so. Did you have any other things you wanted to show us? Yeah, I'll show, I'll show, I'll show you this a little bit. This, this is, uh, well, it's, it shows the metal. These, these, uh, this is, uh, if I can do it here. These on, uh, over, uh, on this, uh, where my finger is, that, that was my enlisted cap, the cap insignia, and these were the lapel. Now, over here, the World War II Victory Medal, that's this one here, and we'll continue over the other way. American Defense, that was because of the Battle of the Atlantic, they called it, a submarine, anti-submarine. And that was uh, June 25th, 1943, uh, yeah. And uh, this is, this, th yeah, oh, wait a minute, where are we here? Ameri oh, oh, take it, I take it back. This one here is the American Defense. You ha that was from 1939 until uh, 1945. In other words, if you were in the service, you received that. Mm -hmm. uh, American, there's the American Theater. Or the the uh, star was, uh, that's the Battle of the, the Atlantic. And the star is called, that, that's for the Battle of the Atlantic. And this is the uh, European medal. And there's four battle stars on that. Uh, that's uh, Normandy, Northern France, the Rhine, and Germany. And then this is the air medal. You, you see those are for every six missions. And then this is the Distinguished Flying Cross for completing the tour. And that was on uh, 6th of August, 1944. And I, I see uh, you were a warrant officer at one point? That was a flight officer. Flight officer, that, okay. We'll have to digress a little bit on that one. When we went into flying, we were not cadets. We were flying, going to be flying sergeants. Well, a few of people before me graduated as flying sergeants, but when they had a lieutenant as a co-pilot, that went over like a lead balloon. 
So they decided, well, let's make them flight officers. So they did. Well, that didn't work out too well. So <laughs> finally they commissioned us and gave us the second lieutenant's commission. <laughs> so. And then you were eventually a captain, it looks yes, like. Yes, that's right, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And then I think I have... Uh, Oh yes, I can. I can zoom in on that. Yeah. That's, uh, if you if you hold it more back towards back you, it up a it's bit easier of, for me. This is this shows Normandy. You can barely see the the landing barges. We were about ten thousand feet. Now, where did you take that out of the bomb bay or? No. Well, we I didn't take. We had somewhere? we had K two cameras oh, okay. built into the airplane. Uh -huh. In other words, you look over here. This is Dunkirk. So we re we took bomb strike bomb strike photos, uh -huh. see, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, there's just four masons flying. Th this is flak. This is what the, this is what they shoot at you. Okay. One of those. Yeah. We've seen one other of those. The photograph on the other page is showing the everyone on the wings. Oh yeah. Flying. All right. Yeah, here's, one other of those. here's a list of my missions. I mean, the radio operator. Now, here, here's a picture of the crew. There's one man missing because he was AWOL. <laughs> this, was take, this was taken after uh, we, we completed our tour. Now, where about to you there? Down here. Okay. All right. Okay, got it. Okay. Hey, uh... As a matter of fact, where is it? My wife's uh, wedding gown was made from my parachute. Oh, really? It was. It was before they went into nylon. It was. Uh, uh, it, it, it was silk, and it's now in a museum over in uh, England. This is what when we sent it to them. You can go th look through that and see if it can see what the. Uh, 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 I'll get a good picture of it here. This is some of the people over in England. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Oh, yes, I, not, a, not a problem. I think I have a better photo. Oh, so they put that right in the museum, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, at a, uh, the, it's called the um, Airport Museum. It's a 93rd bomb group. It has the uh, museum. We have a Quonset hut there. Now here, here's a here's a, here's a different picture of it, a little bit bigger. Can you see it? Yeah. See, we just interviewed somebody from the 93rd. I'll have to look him up. Maybe maybe you know him. <laughs> well, I, I doubt if I'd know him. Uh. 93rd, actually, the 93rd, they were on Pulaski Air Raid. They were they were stationed they were stationed out of Africa temporarily. Uh -huh. they, went, they went from England down to Africa. Then. They were on the oil oil fields. When were you married? Hey, uh, let's see. Uh -oh. November 6, <laughs> 1945. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, you have a copy of this. I yes, think. sir. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Here, here, here was my bride. <laughs> Now we both, she just turned 80 and I just turned 81. So, yeah, so, so. here's a, uh, a, a poem. You want to know what, what it was like to fly missions? Well, let me show you this. This was written by one of our guys in the, he was the 844th gunner. And I, I don't know what, it, but this is what it's like. If you want to read it so he can hear it. So. Yeah, if you want to read it, go ahead. That flashlight is bright as it hits with the eyes. Get up, he whispered, it's time to rise. You're flying today, dress warm, it's cold. Get ready for briefing. 
where the target's told. We come to attention as the CO appears. He pulls the curtain, revealing our fears. Informed of the area, we'll cross over the Ruhr. The flak will be heavy and deadly for sure. But we'll have our mascot, must, our, uh, excuse escort. me, escort Mustangs today. Thank you, Lord, each of us pray. We're at the IP, the target's in sight. Black clouds of flax surrounds Libs in flight. The bomb bays are open, our missiles are freed. Each target bound in bursts of speed. Now westward we turn toward the setting sun. We're almost finished, another mission done. Near the field, red flares are fired. There are crews with injured and medics required. Now the debriefing. What did we see? One plane went down. Parachutes? Three. And the results of our bombs was the target destroyed. The 500, the 500 pounders did their task, but our feelings are void. Now back to our huts and into the sack, because tomorrow again we'll return to that flak. Day after day, we will continue to soar over the Reich as our engines roar. Carrying the message with each bomb we release, only total surrender will bring us, to, bring us the peace. Then the lights again all over the world will shine once more, the flags unfurled. In freedom's breeze, we'll proudly wave in honor and glory for those who gave. The, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we, we used to be able to go down to London Every six missions, they give us a three-day pass, and uh, it was very interesting. And speaking of flags and furl, in Westminster Abbey, I went to church there a few times, and all, everything was all barricaded in with, you know, uh, no flags or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Even Piccadilly Circus, the the, the statue and the Piccadilly Circus was all masoned up so to prevent bombs from destroying them. I was quite. A, I was. A, I was in London the first day the buzz bombs came over, and uh, that was the pilot. They called them pilotless airplanes, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was very interesting because it'd be out in St James's Park and you'd hear them coming over, and all of a sudden they quit, and then you'd hear boom. Mm -hmm. so it, uh, it was very. It's an experience that I wouldn't take a million for, but I wouldn't give a nickel to do it again. <laughs> We've heard that expression before many times. <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, yeah, it, 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 it was the beginning of my, my lifetime, you might say. That uh, I, uh, I, as I said before, I have, uh, I grew up fast. Mm -hmm. I was 18 when I went in. Actually, I had just turned 19. We had mid-year mid January graduation. We had half-year graduation A's and B's is. and uh, so we, we could I didn't want to be drafted so I, that's the reason I enlisted so. but it worked out great okay well thank you very much yes, for your interview okay for me but yeah. <laughs> we, we actually have had several veterans come in the one came in I forget where it was here on the island I think mm -hmm. he came in with this jacket on, and, you know, he's, you could see he's holding himself in like a girdle. And he unzipped it, and he says, oh, what a relief. <laughs> now, was your jacket painted at all? Yeah, I, I had, uh, I had a, uh, just to show a, a pilot or a guy with goggles on, you know, mm -hmm. and it just said, he's holding a bomb, and it says, sweated 32. Yeah, right. I remember okay. saying that. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I, I have my flak helmet. I have that at home. I should. I could have brought it over. I didn't think of it. Mm -hmm. Now, did your jacket also have the Eighth Air Force insignia on the shoulder? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. They. Uh, well, I don't know what happened to my uniform because when we moved, to, when I came with American, uh, my dad and mother took over the house that we had back there. We had gotten that on the GI Bill, and uh, I. I don't know what happened to my my uniform, or even my listed uniform. I have mm -hmm. no idea what. I guess at that time you didn't think much about it, you know. It, uh, so. But uh, as I say, I spent uh, 40 years flying all, almost all together. Uh, I got my wings in 42. I came with uh, American in 52, except for the four years I went to school. Mm -hmm. 
and I retired in 82. So everything runs in the twos <laughs> all the way through. So it's, uh, all right, thank you. So, so anyhow, well, okay. this is the insignia of the, the group. Zoom in on it. Okay. Yeah, this is the insignia of the group. And this is the, of course, the American flag yep. and the English flag. And, uh, well, this was the lapel pins for, on our uniform. So that, uh, and, of course, my miniature wings here. So. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh.